All right, the bottom left, our Protoss player from the Team Prime, a very revolutionary and very young Protoss. His ID is... Kratos Prime! Street Fighter voice guy is intense today. Yeah. D is certainly getting excited about the game as well. To the top right in the blue, we have the Zerg player for the opposing team. Uh, he already finished off one opponent. Here we go. This is... Slayers Koka! And the map is Daybreak, as we said. The third base is the most important part of this map because this is a great map to take a fast third on, but as a Protoss, it's fairly easy to attack because there's so many different locations where you can hide pylons. Stargate play is really good here. I feel like this map actually gives both races the most options, and that's why I like it so much. This is my favorite map by far for any matchup in the map pool that we have. Two of the strongest pushes that we have here is uh, definitely the Immortal push and of course Blink Stalker play with a plus two attack. And uh, the Zerg player is in the position where he has to defend again, to be able to defend against both of them, which is not really easy. There are different things that you can do, but the most important part as a Zerg player is you have to scout. You have to scout properly to know exactly what your opponent is going to do, and then you can uh, prepare accordingly. Yeah. Uh, I'm... Like, on this map, uh, oftentimes you see Zerg players go and do exactly what we're going to see from Coco right now, which is to take the third base here. And uh, on this map, differently than Metropolis, when you do this, you're not really vulnerable because it's pretty far away from the Protoss still. And if you scout well for pylons, you're going to face pressure from warp gate timings that you would face at your third base normally anyways. And there's no rocks blocking you. Your third is very accessible. Yeah, you have to spread a decent amount of creep to get those bases connected, but... It's not really a problem to take the third base here, and I really like the choice. It makes a Protoss feel even a little bit silly if he doesn't deny the third, because he's like, oh, I'm going to deny your hatch, and then he doesn't really get that much of a denial. It's not that significant on this map. Uh, very quick gateway going down here. He's going to drop his cannon very soon as well. And he went for faster Nexus. The, the curious thing is, when will our Zerg player take gas, and what will his tech be? We've seen Mulus play kind of make a little bit of a resurgence in this matchup. Say Skoka already scouted that there was an Exus first play by Crater, uh, and now he has the second Overlord in position as well. And the Overlord positioning on this map is always... It will always be like that you can actually hide your tech. You can try, at least you can try to as a Protoss player, because what we usually don't see is an Overlord at the bottom left of the map, so if you place down another pylon and try to take uh, to at least a little bit of what exactly you're doing, you're usually able to pull it off. But now with the three bases or the third base being produced for Koka, he is going for this usual style. We have the... well, that's the one thing that I don't really like about this uh, positioning. We currently have him placing down the Cybernetic Score, and the Cybernetic Score is in a position where it will be exposed to any kind yes. of attack. So if there's going to be some pressure, then the Roachers will be able to snipe the Cybernetic Core. And if you lose the Cybernetic Core, it is such bad news for a Protoss player who tries, who's in a defensive position already. Because it means you can't get any Stalkers. Range units are going to be a big problem for you. So that's one of the things that uh, are dangerous. It's dangerous for sure. This is one of the maps where it's a little bit wider, so you have to make the core as part of your wall if, yeah. you, if, if you don't want to you know, delay your wall quite significantly. Um, and it's unfortunate because with the positioning of the core, like you said, it can be picked up by roaches, as can the forge. So that's something you definitely have to think about. Stargate is on the way, so we are going to see Stargate play coming out from Creator. Third base has already been taken for Coca. We're going to see third and potentially fourth gases. Yep, third and fourth coming up for Creator now. The Zergling spotted that there was no plus one, so he knows that up at this point there's no plus one, and the Overlord saw that both gases are taken at the natural, so he's on four gases now, well, Creator that is. At this point, therefore, a lot of information that Koga can work with, and uh, he can he can drone up a little bit, but he needs additional anti-air, he needs additional queens, he's already at two, he's getting a third, and I guess that he will very soon also start with his evolution chamber. Yeah, he's going to need that, he's going to get his roach Horn as well, just to be safe. Should stir his evolution chamber any second now, so he can get the spores up for potential DT play, but also more importantly, the Stargate play, which he will know is coming. And his Overlord has already seen it, sees the Stargate now. So, great reaction there. Uh, still no evolution chamber, but he will be starting it very soon. There it is. He also didn't build additional queens. Currently has the supply, and he's not even connecting his bases with creep at this point. 
He has one creep to mount out at the third, which is the most important one, because what he wants to do is to spread his creep out a little bit so that incoming attacks will be on creep immediately. He's going to get supply blocked by this attack with the Void Ray, and he did not actually add additional overlords fast enough. Now he's doing it, adding three, but he's going to find himself a little bit supply blocked, so he can only make one additional queen with the drones he's made. Three spore crawlers going up. Robotics already on the way for Creator, and he may try to hit a Colossus timing, but that's very unlikely. Oh, the Zealot getting caught just a little bit too far away from home. I was about to say that I would really like him to use an Observer and the Void Ray in order to force back Creep, but then I had another look at the minimap and I'm like, hmm, well, there is actually no Creep, there's nothing to force back. Yeah, I mean, uh, against a, a normal Creep spread it would be very useful, and we see that sometimes, but Void Ray is going to be the scouting unit here. I'm also a little bit disappointed here, we just mentioned in the last map that Koga is usually one of these players that really focuses on his Creep spread, but this time around we have a lot of active Creep points, we have two active Creep points on the map, and he does not really use them all that well. Yeah, he's starting to do it a little bit now, almost as if he heard you. But Robotic Support Bay actually is on the way for Creator. He may try to hit that timing I was describing earlier. We've seen a lot of players do this really well recently, uh, including Seed, for example. The question is also going to be what kind of reaction is Creator able to force out of his opponent? Is Koka going to transition into a Hydralisk just to be safe when he sees that there are a couple of Phoenixes and one Void Ray, or is he completely going to ignore it? Because there are a lot more Phoenixes now. It's not like he's stopping at 3, which we've seen so often, or at 4. He's already at 5 and uh, 1 Void Ray. So that's a lot of Phoenixes here. He can do a lot of damage. As soon as one of those Queens moves, it's going to be dead. And there's the Hydra then. Yep, he's forced it. And the Queens, like you said, if they get too close, they will die. He's going to be so careful. And now he's going to deny the creep with that Observer, just as you mentioned. Plus one armor on the way. More Colossi coming out. He can't get plus two because he doesn't have a Twilight Council, but he is really hurting the Kree, so it just makes the Hydralis even less effective than they would have been against this type of composition that is coming out. Denying even the first tumor that's really spread out there, and now he could potentially go for probes, and he will. Going for those drones, taking out several of them, including some of the gas drones. Very difficult to replace. Oh, this is a great build from Creator. Infestation Pit coming out. That's also going to be a little bit less effective against Colossi pushes. For a quick second, we had the Rin ratio on this map. I think it was 31 to 24, but I only caught a glimpse of it. Yeah. Uh, in the... You know, this map, oh, hold that thought. Oh, nice. Gadget some of these Hydras. Hydras are light armor, and this is one of the biggest problems that they have against Phoenixes. Phoenixes do extra damage here, and as soon as you... Well, you need a certain amount of Hydralis. If you don't have it, then Phoenixes are just so effective. So double Stargate play, for example, is very dangerous to a Zerg player, even if he goes for Hydralisks, and it's often uh, quite... The problem that you often have is that you don't really account for how dangerous those phoenixes can be and if you underestimate the amount of damage they can do uh, can deal to you then you might just lose your hydro yeah very true uh you know that that can be especially true of, of moving your hydras around eight workers killed in total right now but uh you know when the, the hydras are coming out of the eggs that's the best time to attack there's no way to react and we're not going to see a fast colossus push here he may decide to push out with this third base uh, very soon here these spots the hydras coming across and now his colossi are really going to help him hold this base this is very unfortunate for coca because against the amount of gateways that are now being powered up the colossus range is finishing he's getting another one out it's almost out here this is going to be really easy to hold he's even got two photon cannons up and there's no way coca can really make this work Nani, I would call this a creator build, and it really works for the... Wow, oh! that's bad. He loses three Phoenixes because he doesn't pay enough attention to the minimap. Does not see that those Phoenixes are trying to engage in a battle with like 20 um, Hydralisks. But the thing is that currently we have a fifth base even being taken. Koka realizes, okay, my opponent is on three bases. Um, that's not really something that I'm comfortable with. I need to get ahead in economy. I need to take base number, number four and number five. This will also help me with my production. And he knows that against the uh, Colossi, he's in a tough spot because Colossi and Hydralis, they don't really mix all that well. So he has to make something happen. He needs that Spire. He, 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 he built it already and is going for the Corruptus right away. Yeah, and look at that Observer. Oh! That was close. The, the, the Creator move out here is one that's really, really scary right now because he can even take a fourth as he does this. He's got the perfect composition against what he's, he sees of his opponent. And with this, Koka is going to be freaking out. He's making Corruptors right now, making a few Spines, a Spore, trying to get his Hive up. He knows that if he holds this and gets his Hive, then he's going to be in a decent position to start getting the Brewlords and attacking. 
So he's, he's trying to buy time in any way he can, but this is really, really scary for him. It's stressful. Creator is not going to attack, I think. He's no, going to wait right. until he's at 200 supply. He's taking a fourth right now. He just prepares everything uh, for later on, but he is not going to uh, be the one who is uh, starting to be aggressive right now. He knows that on four bases, he can open up every single tech that he wants. Already starts with the second robotics. He will probably end the Templar Archive later on as well. Warp he prism. can start with his, um, uh, with his mothership as well. So all these things are definitely something that we are going to see happen. And now, Greta is actually moving out, but is he really engaging to this? I think he's going to try to uh, force an engagement that is in his favor. If he can't do it, he'll just go home. This is unfortunate for him, though. He actually opened up the rocks, which is now going to be uh, the bane of his existence, as he may have to cancel this next, but he gets into a great position. The fumbles go down, and a lot of the stalkers not able to this fight as well as they could. Very bad position for Koga to engage, actually. Can he really make this happen? This corner is not really working in its favor. The force fields are really decent, and those Colossi do a ton of damage. Well, now the Corrupt is taking them out one by one, but the double Robo is already done, is already finished, and Koka lost a lot of units here. Yeah, he certainly did, but the Colossus count has been reduced to yes. zero. He actually has to restart his first Colossus. He has double Robo, so it's going to be a little bit easier for him. But this is what he wanted. He wanted to kill those Colossi. He took the advantage. He was like, well, you get your Colossi or get your Nexus. You take your pick. Now I'm going to remax with better units. I don't want these Hydras anymore. They're not actually going to be as useful as uh, having more Roaches and getting these Broodlords, getting more Infestors out. So he's switching his composition up. And in the end, yeah, that was not very cost efficient, but he puts him in an okay position because he double expanded earlier. He's now got those bases fully saturated. He's taking his gas there. Oh, and this Warp is going to have to be careful. Yeah, but gets in anyways. And you're right, he had to get... Oh, he's building another Stargate. I don't think that he... Re he's an autopilot right yeah, now. Yeah, this happens a lot. Oh, he sees a Greater Spire. This is huge. He could warp in some Zealots and target it. Oh, yes, the Queen. Not enough energy, I guess. Oh, oh. they're all cancelled, but still, it may go down. Yes, it does. Oh, oh the Diffuse no. The Diffuse oh. is too late, and the Greater Spire dies. Bad news here for Coca. But as you said, he wants to free up some supply and uh, trading those Hydralis because he can't use them anymore later on. Double Spire now going down as he tries to make sure that this is not going to happen again. The Stargate is about to finish for Creator. He did not realize that he can start his mothership production yep. well that he can get there. Yeah. Oh, here we go. One Colossus in this mix is going to go down so fast for the Corruptors. Second Colossus joins at the back, but it's not really able to engage. It's only fighting invested Terran eggs. And this is a decent trade still for our Slayer Zerg. Koka pushing back these Immortals and Stalkers. The Stalker count getting low here. This is not good for Creator. Now he has no way to defend his fourth base. And Creator could actually have used Corruption here, which he did not do. He should do that in the next fight in order to make sure that these units are a lot more efficient. Right now he's going straight for the Colossus. And here we have Corruption, but at the same time the Nexus is going to die as Koka is completely focusing down his opponent's base, but there's still four bases for Creator. Yep, and Creator, yeah, with that base at the top left, he has secured it. Perfect timing here for those probes to run away there. Ten more Infestors on the way. He wants these to lock down the units of his opponent. He wants to stop Creator from doing another push because he knows the Colossus count is limited with the amount of Infestors he has out now. With five more coming out here. He can slow down a push because right now he's trying to get the Greater Spire up again. He's getting his 2-2 upgrades out. He knows his opponent's upgrades are way better, so he's trying to do all these things at once while have throwing a thro he threw all of his units away killing that nexus so he knows he's very vulnerable but i like how he's he's planning things out here now getting a few more corruptors out and right now creator can attack him but he's gonna have to do it so careful if he loses an engagement he's probably gonna lose this game Creator, on the one hand, it was a misstep of not actually uh, building the fleet being when he could, but starting with the Stargate. But by killing the Greater Spire of Koka, he bought himself enough time to make to get the mothership out anyways, without a problem at all. So it might have been a misstep, but he more than made up for it by just taking down his opponent's Greater Spire and making sure that those brood lords would hit very, very late. And just look at the screen right now where we had all yeah. these infestors. That is Koka. 20, 20 infestors out. Yeah. That's Koka for you, man. And also, of course, the Neural Parasite upgrade. They are going both for all these upgrades. We have more, we have double Warp Prism, actually. I love how Creator is playing this, but at the same time, he has to defend against this attack. And there are a lot of Infestors. Yeah, but at the same time, Koka has to be very careful. If he loses the Infestors, it's going to be yeah. really bad news. He needs to pull them back because I don't he's know. losing a ton of them right now. There and comes the, the Yeah, they blink in, and the Infested Terranex are not hatched. 
He's taking out tons of investors here. The supply dropping like crazy for Coca right now. The thing is that Coca, even if he loses, uh, uh, sorry, Creator, even if he loses that base, as long as he takes down these investors, he will be fine. And he kills 18 investors. Oh, and he's killing a ton of the corruptors as well. This is not good. You cannot afford to lose 18 investors. Yeah, and now his corruptor count down now to just one with three broodlords. He was down to four. They're making all of his corruptors into broodlords now, so he has no more corruptors. And the mothership, it is halfway done. So is plus three weapon or plus three armor coming out for creator. Two more colossi. He has 82 probes. He's probably not going to make a single more. Uh oh. Okay, he's fine. Yeah, the war prism here is fine, but that's uh, that's definitely starting to be very very scared. The war prism warps in a couple of units, but it dies too early. Koga's defenses here are great, but the trades that he accepts are not really worth it. Earlier on with the Hydralis, he wanted to free up the supply. He could have traded a little bit more efficiently if he would have moved into a better position. But it was fine after taking down those Colossi. But right now he has to be careful because everything is working quite well for Creator when it comes down to the tech. He was not able to max out yet. But the mothership will be out in just a few seconds. And we have already a plus three armor on its way. Double war prison once again. Oh, and this is a great engagement. Creator gonna take out so many of these roaches. Yeah, he's gonna lose a small group of stalkers with the mothership out. He's gonna be able to buy himself time to get more out to deal with the broods. And he's just gonna blink forward again very likely here. Cautiously does not. I like that because there could be broods and spines on the other side. He does not know. Plus one air weapons coming out now. We may see a switch. Uh, to air with multiple targets. He already has the two and he's got the fleet beacon ready. So I like this choice. It's gonna make his mothership slightly stronger as well. War prisons everywhere. I really like how he's using them. He definitely uh, took a look at Ace against Boom Boom. Yeah, he certainly did. A lot of spines here, but with the upgrades on these zealots, it's gonna take more than one transfuse to hold these down. And he, he does use two, and he will actually hold this, but he's there's well. a second one coming in, and he's definitely going to target the Infestation Pit. That's been his choice here. This time, the War Prism is not going to die, and that's a lot, a lot of sellouts. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised he's not going for the, the Infestation Pit. He's actually going to take out a lot of Lings, but that was not the most cost-efficient drop we've ever seen. He can force his opponent back a little bit, it's, uh, but he does not attack, so it's not like he just tries to get him. Oh, actually, now he... Does he move in? No. He considered it. Uh, I, I like... I like how he did that Look drop at just production him. Yeah, three Stargates, we're gonna see carriers. Right now, we see the Graviton Catapult upgrade coming out. Yes. Fling those Interceptors out at a much higher rate. Two more Broodlords, three Corruptors coming out. He's got plus two air weapons coming out as well. These carriers, though, can be really scary if they are hidden properly. And now he's attacking the bottom right at the same time. Koga is trying to hit the top left, moving in with the Zerglings and Rose. He's got one Temple just there, but trying it's not to enough. snipe. He's moving and just trying to snipe the base, but at the other end of the map, we have the base going down. There's no way that Koga is going to save this. Both of them losing an expansion. Yeah, both of them losing an expansion indeed. Some uh, workers being taken out. Recall used defensively to save his units from those Broodlords. Nicely done. Uh, you know, he probably could have gotten out either way, but it was definitely the cooler way to do it. And the next is being rebuilt. He's got plus two armor coming out for his air weapons as well as shields. Everything uh, coming out. He's making that. He's going to make that carrier transition very soon. Koka also uh, and two additional stargates that will put him up to six. No, yeah. seven. Seven, I believe. Yeah, that's actually seven stargates for him. Wow. I mean, you have to have a lot of change in order to afford it. It's a very expensive unit, that much is true. First carrier in production, plus one shield on the way. I'm sorry, that's plus one armor, not plus two armor for uh, air units. I was mistaken there. That's how rarely we see that upgrade. Creator has a very high worker count, too. He's at 82 against 68 workers, so that's something that you should always consider when we compare the overall supply, because, of course, the army supply is currently still in Creator's favor, but not by as much as you would think. Yeah, and this Broodlord positioning is quite good. Before the carriers are out, before he has a an answer for these, he may lose his Nexus. The Investors are in position as well. He's got only five Investors out right now. It's going to become seven with two additional ones on the way. But this is a huge win here for Coca. However, he's going to lose his base again at the bottom right. He has no answer for this, and the Mothership can recall again. The Mothership can recall indeed, and one of the big problems that he has is that the anti air is not enough. He's getting a couple of Corruptors that he badly needs because he's currently only at six of them. 
At the same time, though, we don't really have enough units in production for his opponent. With all the money that he has, he could build a lot more carriers. Right now, actually, he's supply block by now. He started another one, and now he's supply block. And he cannot use this war prison that he sends to the top right. Yeah, he can't. He doesn't have enough supply. Once he starts losing a few more units, though, he will be able to. These broodlings not targeting the Nexus. There they go. A little bit too late. He's going to be able to force to cancel this next wave, but he's very vulnerable. He's, he's moving way out here, and yeah, he's got some corruptors and he's got some investors, but this is a scary army from Creator. I would not want to fight this right now. He's got some storms available to him as well. The carriers are not going to be hidden much longer. If he wants to hit, I think right now is actually his oh. best chance. Now is the best chance for Koko to make this work. So far, the seven Stargates have not been used at all. Is he going to blink? Where are the bundles? Where he are they? Some. There he, they are. There they are. He needs them really badly. The, there is no Vortex available. The Mothership is being targeted down. It dies. Koka is pulling this off. The problem for Greater is he does not have those carriers yet. He's just building them now. Everything got so delayed. And here are the Colossi. Every single one of them already dead. And Greater drops in supply like crazy. While Koka is trying to take the game. He's trying to shut down his opponent's yep. egg unit production. Seven Everything carriers on the way. But they're going to be shut down like you look said. At it. Everything's all, dying. All the Broodlords were so low on hit points that they couldn't quite finish them off. And that was such a razor-thin engagement for that reason. He's losing not only his carrier production here, but another Nexus. Probes are forced off the line. He's got 1,400 minerals, but he needs to spend them. On the other hand, the Zerg player, even though he has the sick army, his economy is really hurting. And a few more War Prism drops could really shut down all the mining he has. So but it's going to come down to army versus army potentially here. And Koka has the much better army right now. Koka has 111 army supply against 68. And look at the gas for Creator. He just doesn't have any. No, he does not. He's taken out the last mineral mining, though, of our Slayer Zerg. This is a really stressful situation. And here come those Broodlords. He no longer has a Mothership. He's got three more carriers coming out here, but the Changelings see everything. They indeed do. Creator had a great, great position with all the production that he had, but those carriers hit way too late. He tried to make it happen with the composition that he had, uh -oh. but was not able to face the Broodlord army of Koka, who is now targeting another base. He lost and the also core. More production buildings. This is really stressful. He does not have, he only has three carriers out and 18 interceptors, Third. four Archon support. It's not enough. 13 Corruptors. 13 Corruptors, and of course they're also the Infestors. Eight of them, and they have Neural Parasite. Well, he's continuing the attack here. He's trying to target down this hatchery, but the spines have been moved, repositioned to defend it. He cannot actually assault this position, not without bigger armies. And yeah, the Queen has full energy. She can transfuse no problem whatsoever. He wants this carrier, and he may be able to force it out. No, he won't. It's not going to be out in time. No. He gets the money back, but that's all he gets, and it's the, the carrier count remains at three. Does not have enough for the investors and corruptors, and we may see a slow and painful death here for Creator right now. And here we go, Infestor Terrence, that immediately being spawned. We have the Fungal, and here comes Coca, and Creator is down in supply. The corruption spells used on every single carrier, they die, all of them. And the Prime player is in so much trouble as he drops down to a 50 supply. Coca. He is taking apart every single production building that Creator Prime still has. And even though our Protoss is starting another expansion, is still mining from one base, he does not have the production to make this work. No, he doesn't. His probes aren't even split between the two bases he has. He's only got 58 supply left. He's got no army to defend, no army to speak of. And this, the production of his opponent is good enough that he can just make a few more roaches and go and kill those bases. He can actually just fight interceptors at this point with the amount of corruptors he has. Boom, there goes the carrier. The gateway here will fall as well. The queen may even kill it. And this is lights out for creator. Coca will take a lead. Yeah, Coca is going to take this game if he doesn't really mess up. But at this point, he can take another base, and he should. He still has some mining going on, doesn't have the resources right now because he builds some Zerglings, tries to scout everywhere on the map what exactly is going on, attacking one of the last bases that creator actually has. The cannon is gone. And now those Inferis ter Infested Terrans will do some damage before the Zerglings and the Broodlords will finally arrive. Yeah, but you yeah. saw that Stalker Force at the bottom right. He was trying to kill a Hatcher that may potentially be there, but it wasn't there. What went wrong here for Creator? He seemed to be in a really great spot. He had five bases, he had his tech and everything. I feel like the problem for him was that he was trying to go for these carriers. He spent so many resources on the seven targets. He had seven carriers on, on the way, but he had a poor engagement. It was, like you said, it was the perfect timing for Koko to attack. 
And the way that he dealt with it was poor. He used all of his energy on his mothership to do a recall, so he didn't have a Vortex. And then suddenly he's facing that Brewlord composition that before Pross figured out how to use Vortex with, could not fight, and he didn't have a Vortex, so he just he struggled to deal with it. Now his economy is so shot, he's gonna lose his last Nexus. This is all he's got left. No Vortex, no anti-air units, just didn't have them. He was maxed out before. Sacking some units with a counterattack might have been able to just open up enough supply, but here's the GG as Koka takes the second game and Creator falls victim to the Slayer's player. Such a great game though. I like the carrier idea, but the way it was executed was not it was not flawless, let's just say that. He thought he had more time. Yes. And Koka hit the perfect timing, hit him really hard where it mattered. And once he hit that first wave of anti-air units, like you said, there was no way to deal with the Broods anymore. We saw great storms on the Broods. How many Broodloids were in the red? Probably about 90% of them, but he couldn't kill them. And eventually they got all their hit points back and they were still doing the damage. And you can't blink in and kill them with that many Broodlings on the ground with the amount of Infestors he had with Infestor Terrans. It was just not going to happen. Sela is definitely happy here. His team is ahead with 2-1. to one. Jessica and Boxer as well. They just had a quick shot of the Prime Bench and uh, they are definitely not in a cheery mood. They know exactly that this is going to be hard and we th they talked earlier about the ace the ace for slayers and uh, this is going to be puzzle puzzle has been playing so well especially in the team league and he has not been out yet so they have to be they have to think very very carefully about what exactly they're going to do the coach said earlier that of course he tried to prepare players to take down puzzle he mentioned maru he mentioned marine yeah. king those two players would could also be used to attack coca now but at the same time do they do want, they want to use them right now? It's no, be I don't stressful. think so. It's really difficult, but the player choice will find out soon enough. Well, the prime team is going to choose the next player. We've seen him use Bjorn several times early, and that was a, uh, a decision that we questioned a little bit. But now it's been explained. He says, "Oh, he gets nervous. We want to send him out earlier rather than later." Who's it going to be? Well, it looks like Boom Boom is uh, he's already ready, man. He stood up before we even got a camera shot of him. Yeah, there he is. Boom Boom is going to face Coca. We were going to have a Zerg versus Zerg. And Creator doesn't seem too phased by this. Not at all. Bungo, a great Zerg player. And, I mean, he has shown us incredible matches in the team league before. I don't expect him to, to flop here. I think he'll show a great game no matter what. He must also be very, very eager to prove himself here because he just dropped out. He dropped out into Code B. And uh, for him, it, it's such a sad story. He was so close to actually uh, getting a spot in Code S, but Marine King was not able to win against Ace in the up and down group, and uh, therefore Bung Bung ended up with a worse score than his opponent. Dropped into Code A, had to play the round of 48 where he lost to Vampire, and now he is in Code B. So definitely a very sad story here for a great Zerg player, very strong Zerg player, and he will definitely try to prove himself to his team here and show that he is a lot better than people might actually think. Yeah, uh, definitely a big, big name for the Prime team. Very underrated. And he's stressed a little bit. Yeah, he seems like he is really trying to calm himself and focus. Well, he's got five minutes to do it because we are going to have a five-minute break. When we get back, we'll have a ZBZ between Boom Boom and Coco.